The game of hockey is full of agitators. Some players' entire purpose is to get other players off their game. We're talking the Brad Marchands, the Matthew DeChucks, Alex Burrows, Drew Doughty's. These types of players generate so much drama. But no matter how you slice it, this drama can make the game so much more entertaining. And what makes NHL so unique compared to other major league sports is that you can get serious retribution because of the physical nature of the game. Because whether a player celebrated too early, there was a dirty play, trash talking, or perhaps a fan who may have gone a bit too far, instant karma moments are bound to happen. And when they do, they are amazing. In today's video, we're gonna go over instant karma moments. If you can think of any other moments, comment down below. I'm a big fan of instant karma, I don't know. I always have been, I always find it very satisfying. So comment down below if you think of any others. And make sure to press subscribe for some more awesome hockey content. Let's get right into this video. We will start with perhaps the most notorious case of instant karma in NHL history. In a game versus the Colorado Avalanche, Steve Sullivan receives a phantom high stick to the face. And this high stick results in a gash on his head which causes Steve to rush to the bench with a towel on his head. And on his way to the bench, Steve Sullivan gets mocked by a fan and this mocking results in a brief but pretty heated exchange. However, later in this game the puck would end up getting shot out of play and guess who it would dome in the head? Yeah, I'm sure you guessed, that's right. The same fan that mocked Steve Sullivan for getting a puck to the face, the odds of this ever happening again are probably one in a million. What are the chances that a fan mocks Steve Sullivan and he gets a puck to the face? It, you, you just can't make this stuff up. And this is perhaps one of the most satisfying and infamous cases of instant karma. Next, we have the case of Carl Alsner, who just wanted to win. Olsner was the 5th overall pick from the 2007 NHL Draft, which was of course the Patrick Kane Draft. And Olsner spent 9 seasons and 595 games in Washington, and he was a respectable top 4 defenseman. And after the 2017 season, Carl Olsner expressed his frustration and the fact that he just wanted to win. He thought the Washington Capitals core was getting older and it wasn't getting much better, and he was just tired of the countless second round exits. And so he saw an opportunity through free agency to have a chance of winning that Stanley Cup and signing with another team. So Carl Alsner decides to call it quits with the Caps, who at the time they were being criticized as the core was getting older and they weren't adding in much young talent. But anyways, Carl Alsner would sign a 5 year $23 million contract with the Montreal Canadiens. And in the 2017-2018 season, the next year, so literally the next year, the Washington Capitals would go all the way to the finals to defeat the Vegas Golden Knights to win the Stanley Cup. And as for Olsner, the Montreal Canadiens would fail to even make the playoffs. And this is the same squad he didn't believe in. And after this season, Olsner would regress so fast, he ended up in the minors the next season. And Olsner today, and I mean, I guess hockey isn't on right now, but Olsner is still a minor league defenseman who's looking very far from being that NHL caliber player he once was. So this case wasn't necessarily instant, but this definitely was a great case of karma. Next, we have the case of celebrating too early. Flashback to the 2009 World Juniors. Team Canada and Russia are matched up, and the winner goes to the gold medal round. And this was an extremely tense matchup. Team Canada had such a stacked team. We're talking John Tavares, P.K. Subban, Jordan Everly, Jamie Benn, Evander Kane, Petroandro, Tyler Myers. This team was stacked. And for Team Russia, they were led by Nikita Filatov and Evgeny Dadunov. And Team Russia in the third period would take a 5-4 lead and in the dying seconds with an empty net for Team Canada, Nikita Klukin would make a very bad decision by taking an extremely unnecessary shot at an empty net even though he had the time and space to rush up the puck, perhaps get a better shot on net or at least get the puck in deep. However, the puck would go wide and we have an icing and it was all smiles for Klukin. Team Russia at this point were basically certain they had the game in the bag, it was the dying seconds, they had good momentum, and they were going to the gold medal finals. Well, until Jordan Everly would score one of the most clutch goals in Team Canada World Junior history. Nobody would score an OT and John Tavares would put the nail in the coffin in a shootout and Team Canada would go on to defeat Team Sweden in the finals to take home gold. And this is all because Kalukin would take a very unnecessary shot at an open net and then would start to laugh. Definitely a case of instant karma. Next we have a smaller case, but this one is hilarious. Flashback to 2010. The NM Ducks were matched up against the Minnesota Wild and during a scrum, Miko Koivu loses his stick and what does he do? Well, Koivu decides to take Bobby Ryan's stick right out of his hands in the middle of a play. 
and then he proceeds to continue to battle in the corner. Well, Bobby Ryan would then proceed to pick up Miko Koiba's stick off the ground, which he dropped, and both of them had the wrong hand miss. And Bobby Ryan would rip home a goal with Miko Koibu's stick. Just insane. Like, I know he dropped his stick and he was probably frustrated, but who just goes and grabs someone's stick out of their hands? And how is that not a penalty? On top of that, they just look ridiculous with the wrong handness. Next, with the infamous case of Patrick Waugh celebrating way too early. Back in 2002, the Colorado Avalanche and the Detroit Red Wings had one of the biggest rivalries in hockey. We're talking line brawls, goalie fights. These two clubs had a lot of real hate. Which is what makes this karma extra satisfying. Especially because Patrick Waugh was a drama magnet. I mean, I personally love Patrick Waugh, but he was definitely a drama queen. The game was 0-0 in the dying seconds of the first period. And after a series of crazy saves for Patrick Waugh, Waugh decides to showboat by raising his hand in celebration. But what he doesn't realize is he dropped the puck and Brendan Shanahan would tap in the puck on an empty net. Next, we have Brad Marchand getting karma on a very dirty play. In a game versus the Detroit Red Wings, Brad Marchand slew foots Nicholas Cronwall in an extremely ruthless matter. It was long after Cronwall got rid of the puck, it was very dirty, and he's just lucky that Cronwall would be okay. Well, in a later matchup, there was a massive target on Brad Marchand, and he faced serious retribution as he got absolutely lit up by Justin Abnocator. Now this move was definitely no less dirty than the slew foot, but when Brad Marchand continually plays on this line and crosses it, he's just begging for stuff like this to happen to him. In fact, in another series of instant karma for Marchand, flashback to the 2018 NHL playoffs. Brad Marchand in game four would do the unthinkable as he would notoriously lick Ryan Callahan, which spurred this extremely famous photo, which is just hilarious. Now this isn't really direct karma, I would probably consider it to be indirect karma, but this action was said to give an extra boost to an extremely agitated Tampa team, which honestly took some of the momentum from the series, and Tampa would go on to win the next game and advance to the Eastern Conference Finals. So basically the action of licking Ryan Callahan energized the Lightning into putting the nail in the coffin, and on top of this, the Bruins would be very upset with Marshawn. Next, with the notorious case of Esso Lindell diving in last year's playoffs. In Game 3 of the semifinals, the St. Louis Blues were up 2-1, and Bertuzzo and Lindell were going at it beside a board battle. Well, Lindell would make three extremely questionable dives, which resulted in Bertuzzo taking a penalty. Now, there definitely is an argument that Bertuzzo had too much force, but this was clearly a dive. In fact, Esso Lindell started laughing after he took the penalty. Well, near the end of the third period in a 3-3 tie game, Patrick Maroon and Lindell were once again battling in front of the net. And after getting cross-checked, Esso Lindell would go down like he just got shot by a 12-gate shotgun. And Patrick Maroon would go around the net and pot in a shot with zero coverage because Esso Lindell dove. And because of this, the Blues would win the game and have a massive momentum boost leading to winning the series. This single dive could be correlated to winning the cup. Next, we have Daniel Carcillo. And of course, Carcillo has had an extremely controversial career. And today, he's trying to turn things around, but regardless, he still remains to be a very polarizing player, and this incident is just crazy. During a game versus the Edmonton Oilers, Daniel Carcillo makes a very controversial hit on Tom Gilbert, sending him barreling to the ice. And this play results in a penalty, if not a borderline suspension as it was a very ruthless and just unnecessary play. As Gilbert was in a very vulnerable position and he was even just nowhere near the puck. However, during this incident, Daniel Carcillo would tear his own ACL that led to the penalty. Can you believe that? During an incident where he was trying to be extremely dirty, he tore his own ACL. If that's not instant justice, I, I, I don't know what it is. Next, with PK Subban trying to be a bit too flashy. In a game versus the Winnipeg Jets, P.K. Subban tries to pull off not one, but two spinoramas coming out of his own zone. He executed the first spinorama really well, but on the second one, he butchered it very hard, turned over the puck to Mark Shifley, who would then go to bury the puck. Now, I'm a huge fan of P.K. Subban, but this is the kind of stuff where you kind of understand where his teammates start to really just not like him. Because P.K. Subban is honestly a high-risk player, so if he does pull this off, it's good, but it's just the risk factor here. It's just not worth it. 
Anyways guys, can you think of any more instant karma situations? Comment down below, I would love to hear them. I'm sure everyone else would too. Cause I don't know if it's just me, but I find instant karma or just, I guess, justice to be extremely entertaining. And before I end this video, I want to give you guys a little channel update. Um, the past three weeks, I've been absolutely swamped with finals and work and school. So I guess, sorry for the lack of uploads. Um, I'm gonna be back, getting back on track here in the next couple of weeks. My last video on the rise and fall of Danny Healy didn't do extremely well, but for those of you who did watch it, you guys really seem to like it. So if you haven't checked it out already, go check it out. But anyways guys, what type of videos do you guys wanna see on this channel? I recently decided to change my editing to the Adobe Suite. So some of you may have noticed that my videos are looking different. It's been a pretty big headache, but I, I'm just hoping the goal here is every video I get better and better at editing and hopefully one day I can be pretty good. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope everyone's doing well in this crazy time. See you guys later.